Schlimmer Brothers, they've been in business for over a hundred years. That's so impressive to me. Why do they need this? After a hundred years, they must have figured it out. Well, they are definitely the oldest business we're working with, but they're also the biggest employers. And Schlemmers isn't that big. They employ about 20 people. But when you stretch that over the course of their history, there's something really amazing about that. Having a strong history definitely helps a business, but you still have to be ready to adapt and grow if you're gonna survive. And so I think we wanna work with them to make sure that they stay in business and keep supporting families for years to come. Small towns across the country are fighting for their survival with the odds stacked against them. But what happens if we join that fight? If we dedicate a little money, a lot of experience, and thousands of hours of work into one small town, focusing on the businesses at the heart of their main street. Nearly 10,000 people wrote in to tell us about their favorite community, and the country voted for one winner. Now, marketing expert Amanda Brinkman and her team at Deluxe are going to work for the people of Wabash, Indiana. And they've brought along entrepreneur Robert Hershevek to help revitalize the town. Every episode, we're working with a new small business to see if we can change the odds, if together we can start a revolution. I believe the staff is everything. Everybody can have machines, everybody can have a roof over their head, but you really, it is the people that make it endure for 113 years. My great-grandfather's brother was the original J.H. Schlemmer brother in 1903, and then my great-grandfather came along in 1908 and joined the team as a, as a metal fabricator, and uh, it became Schlemmer Brothers. We sold wood stoves, cook stoves, heating appliances, but it was real common in those days to have a hardware store with a sheet metal shop. Our sheet metal shop has grown up, consumes about 60% of the business now. We still sell stoves and do metal work. I'm proud of our legacy, just the fact that we endured this long. That's families we're feeding, and over the years, it's hundreds of families that we fed. I hate to hire somebody and think that I could ever possibly lay them off, and we really have not ever done that. Folks come and they stay. These guys are artisans, they're craftsmen, and they want to think and they want to be challenged every day, and, and we give them that. I've always believed that. If you have the culture, everything else will come. And this one over here, do the rollers normally come with it? They don't. That's a modification I did for convenience here in the shop. Okay. Schlimmers is one of those places where you could go around town and ask people and they'd say, oh, that guy's been working at Schlimmers for 30 years. That's what I was looking for. I was a correctional officer for five years. My wife hated me working at the prison. Absolutely hated it. I was mean. I was hateful. I treated everybody like they were a criminal. That affects you deep down as a person. Several different options that way. They had an ad for somebody as an installer, service guy. So I came down and talked to Kent, and two weeks later I had a job offer. Schlimmers, this is Chris. How can I help you? He carried himself very well. For a 28-year-old kid, I thought that was pretty exceptional. What kind of chimney do you have? I couldn't really not hire him. We had a lady here at the store. Her name is Vicky. I had been here for a few months when Vicky's health kind of declined. So I came in, trained with Vicky for three or four days, and then Vicky was gone taking treatments. That's when I started kind of on the retail side of things. It's probably going to be a situation where you have to replace You could see that his people skills were really exceptional. People love him, and I hear that all the time. You know, the sheet metal side of it is my passion. I'm an engineer. My grandfather was an engineer. He was my role model. But I do feel a responsibility to the retail side. This old place is home. We've been here since day one, 1903. Those doors opened. You know, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's sometimes overwhelming. Retail's really, really tough, and I don't think it's in my nature. So I basically just told Chris, this is your store. It means a lot to me, what he has given me. I don't come to work upset. I come to work looking forward to it. It's made me a better dad. It's made me a nicer person. 
people, but I'm not experienced. You know, I came from a correctional facility. I didn't have any business management experience. I know absolutely nothing about marketing. For him to just hand over part of his business that's been here for 100 years, I mean, that's a big deal. I screw this thing up, he could close the doors. That's the kind of stuff that keeps me up at night. Kent seems like an incredible boss. He's built a great culture at Schlemmer Brothers, and Chris is certainly evidence of that. But Chris also got thrown in at the deep end, and because he cares so much, you can tell that the things he doesn't really know worry him. I'm meeting with the two of them at the retail shop so we can figure out how to keep the Schlemmer legacy going strong. Hi! Hello! How are you? I'm good. Good to see you again, Chris. How you been? And you must be Kent? I am. I've heard wonderful things about wow, you. Oh, okay. Now you run more of the retail side and you're you're kind of more over at the fabrication shop. Right, right. So back in the day this was kind of hardware retail-y. You know, you can see some of the old products in there, but uh, uh, wood stoves, cook stoves, that kind of stuff. So the sheet metal used to be produced here on site as it well. It did, started out upstairs and then it kind of sprawled that way and you know now consumes about an acre of space in a different facility. I want to really get a feel for the history of this place. So we're heading up to the top floor where Schlemmer Brothers Metal Fabrication really began. This building, so old, I have no idea how old it is. I think we thought maybe 1870-ish. And it's a love-hate thing. These buildings are tough. and mm -hmm. It's very costly just keeping it together. And, and we need to be profitable to do that. What about you, Chris? What kind of training do you feel like you would need to kind of take that retail piece to the next level? I am horrible at marketing. Facebook, the Twitter stuff. I'm I'm not the typical 30-something. Um, I know the product, I know the pricing. Reaching the people, reaching more people, that's where I need help. We hear that from small businesses, though, across the country. I mean, because you know your area and your industry so well, why would that mean that you are a master of social media? Nobody expects that I know welding. You know, it, 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 you have training in certain do things. I don't. <laughs> and that's what we're excited to help with. You know, if, if that's a thing that's, that's staying in the way of that next level or, or continuing to provide a legacy for this business, um, then we're happy to help with that piece. I've got a lot of work to do in that, and I think you guys can help me a lot. So we'll see. Yeah. Me, see, that kind, sure that kind I, of pride I mean, is what I'm talking about. I mean, he, I, I feel like you have such great employees that really I take do. it so seriously. I, I think that pride is what's so important about small business owners and, and the fact that you have that extra degree of caring. And I am the lucky one here because, you know, th these guys don't come around uh, that often. And, uh, and I, I appreciate him. Well, I appreciate having a job where I know I can come to work every day. So it's important to me too. Should we all hug? I feel like we should all hug. <laughs> Metal workers don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, Wabash. Wayne Weaver here reminding you to head down to Center Court Barbershop today for a chop and maybe watch the afternoon Cubs game. Our boys are kind of on a roll. And if you're running low on wood pellets, head down to Schlemmer Brothers. You might just run into the Main Street Revolution team working with Chris and Ken. They've only been in that place a hundred years, so I guess they're doing something right. Schlemmer's is a complex business with multiple sources of revenue, so I want to bring Robert in to talk a little bit more about the operations side of things. Hey, Ken. Robert, yeah. We're meeting up at the metal fabrication shop first, so we can get a fuller picture of what makes Schlemmer Brothers tick. So what I thought I'd have you do today is some welding. We got guys over here welding, guys over here. You think you're up to it? I'll do it. You okay. Do it? Yeah, I'll try it. What do you think about her shoe selection? Yeah, yeah, you, you probably they're should have. Toe. Okay, well, you should have something a little that's harder. Not the, uh, that's not the part I'm worried about. Can she, she put on socks? Or we can just see how well she dances. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, you get your piece tacked together so it doesn't move around, and then you pull the trigger, you get a puddle going, and you just weld the joint. All right, here we go. A little closer. That was better? That's great. I'm very coachable. All right. You ready? What do you think, will it hold? So cool! <laughs> wow! Give me a motorcycle to work on. <laughs> now that we've honed our welding skills, it's back to the retail store to talk shop. So what kind of products do you sell actually here in the retail store? We have uh, all sorts of brands of fireplaces, wood stoves, pellet stoves. I advertise it as everything fire related. You also do things like chimney sweeping services as well? Right? Yep, yep. Okay. You really have three businesses. You have the 
metal fabrication, you have the retail, and you have the service business. Yeah, I'll call this sales and service down here. Right. It's, it's very entertaining. If I take the retail part of the business, does the revenue split equally amongst the retail and the manufacturing? It's, it's pretty even, you know, 55% of it is fab and 45% is retail. Do you like that mix? I don't devote as much time to this as I should. Not that, not that it's an easy thing to get a profit out of, I mean. But, but you make money here. About even. You break even. That's a lot of work for breaking even. We're still feeding people, you know, I still feel good about that. There's still a bunch of guys that work here. Do you make enough money over there to subsidize this and still make good money overall? I, yeah, I think we make decent money overall. You know, I do reinvest almost everything we make back into. I pay myself a wage and everything else goes back into the business and I believe that's key to being sustainable. I think there's things we could do, especially with labor. Here. Labor costs retail. here are, are the biggest cost. Service is the killer, but all those service guys in the summertime, we don't have work for them. Take just a retail part of the business, leave the service guys out of it. Does the retail store make money? Yes. Okay, how many service guys are there? Four. 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 Yeah. If I take just the service revenue, do I make money on the four guys? I don't have a good break out of that, but my gut says no. Okay, but the reality is you couldn't sell the stuff without them. Exactly. That's a big thing of what makes Schlimmer Brothers what it is, is the fact that we sell the product and, install and we bring it to your house and we install it safely. Could you have less? installation guys you know what i really need eight during the season and i oh, need I one in the it's off season it's very seasonal it's very yeah. seasonal they're well trained they're good guys they're they're great employees and i can't just say hey come back in the fall and we'll get you busy it'd be great to find a niche little market you know just mm -hmm. enough to cover their wages something but, to keep them busy in the off season right mm -hmm. but we bleed i mean we bleed profusely on the retail until the season begins you know we'll go into the season probably a couple hundred in the hole he's great about keeping us on pay I, I love him for that, but right. I hate his bank account for that. You know, me, me. it looks like I'm failing up here because we can't uh, pull our weight. Here's my view on it. I mean, I think you have a great business. I don't think you can get out of retail because it defines your brand. Yeah, yeah that's who we are for 100 plus years. Yeah. I, I agree. But the reality is, eventually, you have to make money. Yeah. You know, just because you've been in business for a long time doesn't guarantee you you'll stay in business for a long time. I think we should increase the, the retail sales side of it so that you're not having to kind of continually supplement and, and hope that you break even each year. I think there's a lot of growth. I, mean, I feel like the online marketing strategy is the right way for you guys to expand your footprint. We're here. failing very badly at, at marketing. I mean, we're trying a bunch of things. You know, None of them radio, are. TV. And, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's hard to find a metric to see what's really working. Well, we can definitely help you have better visibility into what's working or not. I mean, that's the beauty of online marketing is it's so measurable. And you could compete in a larger scale and not have to have the physical presence to support your brand because it's you you guys ooze history authenticity but it's not the retail store that uses that it's you that uses that you are the slumber brand Slummer Brothers has a great brand, so it feels like this is a real marketing challenge, right. specifically trying to figure out how they reach the right consumers at the right purchase point. Their greatest asset is 100 years of history. They've got to leverage that because they have to make money on retail eventually. You yeah. don't want your history to kill you. Schlemmer Brothers, I love that business. How did the website look to you? Well, you know, the website was okay. So we're going to really work on kind of the, the user experience and then improve their search ranking around things like chimney sweeps and fireplace and the stoves. 86% of consumers search online before buying products or services. And they visit the store because they had a positive online experience. So we really have to work on the current website. I mean, more people search on mobile than on desktop in the U.S. And right now, their site is not mobile responsive. So we have our work cut out for us. On the plus side, love Chris. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was like an owner in there. He knew that business. Absolutely. You, you can't have a better employee than that. Well, I think, you know, we can bring Chris to Minneapolis and do kind of a retail boot camp. I think that will really kind of get him on his feet. You know, he is so kind and friendly and personable and people love him. But I think we can just help close that gap for Chris so that he can be even more successful and bring the retail to the next stage. And then one of the things I noticed is they have people come in through the side door. I think we should have them move the traffic so you're coming into that nice, new, beautiful space. And then you can experience cool. historic, yeah. kind of a hundred-year-old company feel. So. I love their floors, too. Yeah. I love it. I gotta go back. <laughs>
If there's an employee that you would want at your company, it's Chris. What he doesn't have in terms of experience, I think we can help him with, you know, ways to market the business, ways to merchandise the business. We thought it made total sense to bring Chris to our headquarters. And with the help of fame, we are giving him a retail and marketing boot camp. We really believe what drives a great retail experience is narrow and deep understanding of your customer, of your marketplace, of your economic footprint. How can we create both inspiration, but also start to talk to customers? Everybody's looking for localization, and you already have that story. It's not just about you talking to them, right? Customers coming into your store armed with a lot of information. You have to be on your game. You guys have such great foundation, just how do we build on that? We also want to work with them on a number of facade improvements. We want to reroute the door that people come into, we want to get them new glass for that front door, and then also work on paint and other exterior improvements. A lot of their advertising is actually the guys in the shop developing promotions on Word documents. We can help them invest every single dollar in a way that will bring them more foot traffic, more phone calls and eventually more sales. We put together some guiding principles that we're going to think through when we put the website together. The key feature is really going to be the Schlemmer Brothers brand. It's a really venerable brand, 100 years old. Right. What mm -hmm. we want to talk about is how do we use the paid search Google Ads to try to drive the traffic and draw people in. It's a daunting task to look at AdWords and see the 27 tabs across the top. You've got to take the money that you've got and laser focus it. Chris is definitely a smart guy, and I think what he'll do is take these ideas and run with them and, you know, help Schlemmer Brothers be a success down the road. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Hey. How are you Good doing? Good to see you. How are you? Hey, Chris. Nice how are you? Thank you. Good to see you. All right, we're excited to see the changes. Yeah. Will you show us what's been done? You bet. A uh, local company came in and they put in uh, all new windows down below and it just looks fantastic. So these are the walking pedestrian signs that Schlemmer Brothers actually yeah. manufactured and installed. Yeah. They did a great job. I love that. Yeah. Chris, how was Minneapolis? What's the biggest thing you learned that you didn't know? How important indoor signage is. I'm not able to get to every single customer that comes in here every time. So in order that they can shop for themselves for a moment. They recommended any kind of directional uh, signs from the door. From the very beginning, we felt like Chris really embodied that great employee pride, and it felt very rewarding for them. He's able to apply some of our advice mm -hmm. moving forward. So, any thoughts about using the installers in the off season? We've hashed around a lot of ideas. Um, one that's fencing, because down at the metal fabricating shop, we do fabricate a lot of wrought iron, custom yeah. hand railings. Gotta find something for those people to do in the summer. I like the idea of the fences, because it goes back to the customization work, which is your core mm -hmm. business. It was nice to hash around ideas. I'm not sure we've got any definitive answers, but you know, being able to pull back and look at ourselves from the outside in and make adjustments, I think that is a real good thing. Have you seen the new website? I have not. Oh, no. like it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I'm excited. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is your current website. So you're doing some things right, but we felt like the opportunity was to really communicate the quality and the service visually in the site. So. Wow. Yeah. I feel like checklist? I should That's pay you awesome. more. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, <laughs> seriously. It feels we, much we more. We need to do business then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love the fact that right there, since 1903, yeah. bang, credibility, it's, boom, it's right up front. Something we were clearly missing. Yeah. The other thing we wanted to make sure that we do right away is help with the journey. So whether it's wood stoves, gas stoves, gas fireplaces, electric, we can send them down the right path. I Oops. like that. So much of our time is spent educating and that kind of lets them get mm -hmm. somewhat educated on their own. Yeah. It is amazing just to see that transformation. It's what you would always envision or want for yourself, but knowing how to get there is just pretty exceptional. We want to have your expertise, your vision. We want to make sure that it, we're being very clear that this is a four-generation family. So we show pictures from past generations. You know, here we have a picture of oh, what a great right picture. next to yeah. Byron, right? Mm -hmm. So you, kinda, you get that sense of, of history. The look is, really is killer. Right. It's, it's speaking right to the people that we want to speak to with our website. I couldn't be happy. With it. And then what we're going to do throughout the site is build in keywords so that we raise your search ranking. For most of these products, people are going to do their research online first. Right. So we want to make sure that you're at the top and when they're looking for you online. It's much more mobile too. friendly too. That is, yeah, that is awesome. That yeah, looks it's so, really cool. So amazing. Way more I can't believe that's us. <laughs> <laughs> 
the biggest takeaway for these guys is going to be to continue to think about how they can profitably grow their retail business. They already have the service piece right, they have the craftsmanship piece right, but with just some different marketing applications and some sales ideas, they can start seeing it grow to that next level. You know, the, the retail experts they brought in, the marketing plan that they put in place, it, it's important. And I think if we can continue carrying that forward, then we'll be, we'll be on the right path. So what has this process been like for you and how are you kind of feeling about your business after some of these discussions? I think it's really enlightening. I, I love the way things have been pointed out. Sometimes they're obvious, but we just overlook them. Looking at the website now is, yeah, it's like, wow, that's us. I can't believe it. It's uplifting and, and it makes us want to charge forward. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. We wanted to do something that signified our gratitude um, for you for being a boss for us and, and taking care of us for so long. So. That is really cool. That's Thank you so, cool. so much. Honestly, though, your employees can't say enough positive things about you. So I hope that you do take pride in what a great employer you are. And I mean, think about what your the kind of employment your company has provided to this city for Four generations. generations. And you're continuing with that legacy, and there's something amazing about that. Thank you. I feel good about giving anybody a job. When you step back and look at the big picture, it's something you can be proud of for sure. This experience, it's opening a lot of doors. We're already seeing customers that we weren't going to see before. I'm excited about the future. You know, when you see Kent and Chris, what's amazing is their willingness to learn. When Chris went to Deluxe, he just took all that knowledge in and was excited to bring it back. The spirit of a startup in a hundred-year-old company. Kent just cares so much about running a clean, reliable business that can employ so many people. I mean, that kind of trust and that commitment to the community of Wabash, exactly what the Small Business Revolution is all about. Join us next time as we visit with Thrift Delicious and meet a couple with big hearts, but some real business challenges. See how we try and help them create a more sustainable future for their family.